Hello YouTube, this is DryingKit1313, and welcome to my uh, tutorial video on how to set up, set up and mod your very own bucket server for Minecraft. Now this bucket server that I'm going to show you how to install is for Minecraft 1.2.3. The reason for this being that not all the mods are updated for 1.2.5 yet, so I can't really do that just, uh, just this second. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you're going to want to go to this website, and I will have the link in the description if I can like possibly open it up. Alright, well I'll just go over here. Strange. Um, anyways, you're going to go to this website that is right here. As you can see, I had it bookmarked, but you know, whatever. I'll have the uh, link in the description of this video as to any other information that you may need to know. So anyways, you can see that this is where you're going to get all your mods from. This is very useful, um, and it actually took me a while to find this, and when, after I found this, I got everything set up like so easily, it was unbelievable. So, um, yeah, basically this is all the mods for here. And what you're going to do in order to start with this is you're going to go ahead and download uh, an integrated build of uh, Bucket Server. So you're just going to go ahead into latest build. It'll download and it'll, you know, download it to your computer. You're going to press keep, obviously, um, but I'm going to discard it because I already have it downloaded. Now, if we go ahead and as you can see, you're going to want to create a folder on your desktop or wherever you want this to be. I just think it's convenient that it's on your uh, desktop. So anyways, as you can see in my folder right here, I have the same exact thing uh, set up right here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to right click and you're going to cl uh, click new and then you're going to go to text document. This will create a new text document. You don't need to name it anything because we're going to delete it soon after we create this. And in the description of this video I'm going to have this code um, to be uh, pasted right in here. This is what you're going to paste inside of here. As you can see it has like a whole bunch of mumbly jumbly that I don't really understand. However, this I do understand. These two things right here, uh, the XMX and S XMXS are basically the limits on the amount of RAM that your server is allocated. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find out how much RAM you have. In order to do this, you're just going to go into uh, your start menu and type in system. Then you're just going to go ahead and click on system right there. As you can see, it's going to come up with this screen. It's going to tell you all kinds of fancy stuff like what kind of processor you have, what kind of operating system, which that is pretty important as well. This is recommended for a 64-bit operating system. You 32-bit uh, users may have to do something a little bit different, and uh, I'm not entirely sure. So I apologize for that. Then in the install memory, this is what you really care about, the RAM. As you can see, I have 8 gigabytes, so I'm going to uh, allocate a good amount of RAM to my server. Basically, most regular, mi like, Minecraft takes up around 1 gigabyte of memory, somewhere around there. And then if you're running Windows 7, that takes somewhere around one and a half gigabytes to run. So you want to make sure that you have enough left over if you're going to run it from the same computer that you're uh, going to play Minecraft on. So you basically just change this, and there's a few different codes. Basically this represents uh, one gigabyte, it's 1024 megabytes, which equals one gigabyte. And basically you just multiply that by however many gigabytes you want, and uh, that gets you the number that you put right here, and I suggest just leaving this alone at 1024. The next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that this file name right here matches this. If it doesn't, what you're going to do is you're just going to copy that name, you're going to highlight all of this, you're going to paste it, and you're just going to add .jar at the end. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into File, save as and you're going to click down here under save as file type you're going to say all files make sure you do this or else this will not work 
And then under the file name, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to type it run. Simple enough. But you have to name it dot .bat, dot .bat right there. And basically this is the type of file that runs commands and whatnot. Uh, I really don't understand it, but this is what you have to do. And then you're just going to type enter, or press enter to save. And then you can go ahead and delete your text document. So as you can see, now you have your run uh, run.bat right there. In order to get started, you're just going to go ahead and double click on that. And you can see that a whole bunch of stuff is getting loaded. It's preparing the spawn area for you and all that fun stuff. Alrighty. Pretty fun. It's just going to do all this stuff. You may get a few errors and uh, this is pretty much normal for the first time that you're setting up your server. Um, so expect a few errors and a whole bunch of warnings and you know it's it's whatever. Um, so anyways now that you have that you're just gonna minimize that you can do whatever you want for this. Um, if I were to go into a vanilla 1.2.3 world you would notice that I could log onto the server and all would be good. But we don't want just a regular old server. What we want is we want something that's modded. We want to have a whole bunch of mods that are on it. So basically in order to stop your um, your server, you could either type stop or you can go ahead and exit out. Whatever you may want to do. I just like typing stop because it makes me feel like I know more about coding and whatnot. <laughs> um, but anyways, under your bucket folder that you have right here, you'll notice that there's a few more things that were run uh, when you ran that bat file. You'll notice that Mod Loader and Minecraft Forge are going to be installed because of the config right there, Minecraft Forge and Mod Loader. So that's all good. Um, so basically to install mods, it's very simple. All you have to do is go ahead and download whatever mods you may want. Alrighty. And uh, I actually have a backup. So I'm just going to go into my mods. And let's say we wanted to get all of those mods right here. What we're going to do is we're just going to copy them over, or we can click and drag, but I like to copy them. You could right click and drag to copy if you really wanted to, and you're just going to say copy here. Alright, now you can see that all your mods are in there. And uh, yes, yeah, so I have some code chicken core, I have buildcraft 2.2.13, I have buildcraft I uh, industrial craft crossover, I have advanced machines, additional pipes, 100% wrench fix add-on for um, which we'll call it for Industrial Craft 2. I have uh, compact solars. I have iron chests. I have red power, and I have the thermometer add-on for Industrial Craft 2. So pretty awesome. Now, if we go ahead and run this, I don't know why I went ahead and closed out, but if we run, you're gonna see a whole bunch more stuff pop up, and you're gonna notice that you got a error. The reason for this. And it'll it'll tell you right here. Slot 179 is already occupied by a block E device. When adding adding buildcraft, Zelda, chunk loader, dot block chunk loader, dot a whole bunch of other stuff. So that that kind of sucks. Um, so we're just going to exit out of that. And basically to fix this, this is what's called a uh, item ID conflict. Um, and basically happens when two IDs are or one ID is assigned to two things. So basically you just have to find out whatever ID it was not working with and you're going to go ahead and just change it. I happen to know that block ID 182 for this EE device works perfectly. So you're just going to edit that, save it, and then you can go ahead and run again. And it's going to load up a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to set up the spawn and you're going to see that Red Power 2 World loaded successfully and all that fun stuff. And of course this is all dependent on what mods you use. So don't expect the same things that I'm getting here. Next, you're going to need the same exact mods installed on your um, client version. Simple enough, right? I happen to already have it. I just, uh, well actually I just recorded it. I'm going to upload it soon. This is how to upload uh, or install all these mods to your client version. Uh, this is basically the mods that I use in my server. Uh, that is not up yet, but it will be soon. So you're gonna go ahead and log in and all that fun stuff. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I don't want to waste your guys' time. Seems to take a little bit. I'm going to say not now. You don't want to update 
That would kind of ruin everything, wouldn't it? And if you, as you can see, if I go into, um, uh, well, first off, my servers list has a, a few. Obviously, this is going to be mine. If you want to join your server, and I'll just go ahead and do a direct connect for now, what you would do is you would just do as a server address, if it's on the same computer that you're on, you would go ahead and do local host. You would press enter, it's going to join the server, it's going to log you in, and as you can see, everything's good. I have NEI here, and all that fun stuff, I can go ahead and give myself a Rainmaker, if I was in cheat mode, that is, and you know, all that fun stuff. And uh, looks like I, I forgot one thing that we have to do. Um, basically, what we what we have to do is we have to go and uh, add me to the ops list. So we're gonna go ahead and stop our server. I'm not sure if this is necessary to stop it before you ch make any changes, but I like to stop it just in case. I'm gonna go back into the bucket server and see this thing right here, ops. You're gonna add your Minecraft login uh, under the ops. This will allow you to do all that fun stuff that I was trying to do. And then we're just going to simply run it again. You're going to see all that fun stuff generate. And looks like I just completely messed it up. Okay. Uh, now as soon as it's finished, we can go ahead back into multiplayer. I already have local, ho local, local host right there. And you can see that I can now get myself stuff and put them down. So as you can see, all the mods are installed correctly. So pretty cool, let's look at something else that we need to do, and this is something that you're going to want to do if you want this to be open to the public. So let me go ahead and disconnect from here, I'm going to quit game, and I'm going to stop my server. What you're going to do is you're going to um, either go ahead into your start menu, just type run, this is going to bring this thing up right here, and what you're going to do is you're going to run cmd, this is the command prompt for Windows. Now what you're going to do is you're going to type in ipconfig, simple enough. You're going to scroll up to where you can see uh, whatever connection you're using. If you're using like a, an ethernet cable or you're going to use whatever, this is, I don't know what that is. Um, but anyways, I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm going to use all this stuff. You're going to want to write these two things down, your IPv4 address, which is right here. And you're also going to want to write down the default gateway. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick right here. Uh, never mind, it looks like I already have it written down. Awesome. So now you can go ahead and exit out of that. Next, you're going to go into some type of uh, web browser. And you're going to type in your, um, what was that called? Your default gateway or something like that. Anyways, it's the one that ends in like .1.1 .1 .1 or something like that. 168.1.1. .1 .1. Most routers on uh, by default make you enter in a whole bunch of stuff, um, but yeah. Now you're going to see something like this. It's going to be different for every type of router that you may have. All right, so don't expect to, it to look like this. And if you're looking at it and you're like, mine doesn't look like that, don't be surprised. Basically, what you want to look for is something you're going to want to like browse through all the different tabs that you can go to. I happen to know that mine has a specific one for applications and uh, gaming, and you're going to go to single port forwarding. What this will allow is it will allow other people to connect to your server. Now, let's say I didn't already have this set up. You could ignore it right now. You're just going to go ahead and name it. I'm going to name mine M Minecraft. And then you're going to go ahead and for the external port, you're going to do 25565. For the internal port, you're going to do 25565. Alright, this is the default um, port for a Minecraft bucket server. And then you usually just do both TCP and UDP. I have no idea what that means. Apologize if I offend any of you, uh, any of you computer experts. And then you're going to go ahead right here, you're going to type in your IP address which just happens to be um, for me that one three seven now obviously I don't have to do this because I already did it but then you just make sure that it's enabled alright so simple enough I'm just gonna go ahead and not even cancel any I'm not even gonna save any of the changes what this will allow people to do is it'll allow people to connect to your server so you know you could go ahead and give them your IP address the way you get your IP address I almost forgot 
Uh, you're just going to go to ipchicken.com. And you're going to get this. So you're going to copy this or write it down, whatever you may want. And when you go back into your Minecraft, you're going to log in. Ugh. Why does it take so long? This is obnoxious. Not now. And assuming that you've written that down or copied it or whatever you may have, you're gonna go ahead and well first off you would you would want to be running your server, basically. And then you can go ahead and click add server, you can name it whatever you want, and then you type in the IP address. This is what IP chicken gave us. And then you're going to do a semi, or not a semicolon, but a colon. You're going to type it right there, and then you're going to type in the gateway, 25565. All right, and then you'd click done, and then you would, you know, connect to it, but obviously none of the servers are up right now. So that's pretty much how to install mods, and also how to set up your very own bucket server, as well as allow people to connect to it. Now, uh, if any of you are wondering how you would install plugins, basically you would go to bucket.org, not that difficult to remember, you go to get plugins and you would go to whatever ones, whatever plugins you may want, whatever plugins um, satisfy your wants and needs and dreams and whatnot. Then you're going to go back into your bucket folder, wherever you may have it, you're just going to copy all the jar files or whatever you, it is you may have downloaded into the plugin section. So pretty simple, and this allows you to pick anything that you may want. As you can see, you can choose from the list of mods that we had over there. And uh, yeah, it pretty much allows you to not have to rely on like a tech -it server or a pre-installed everything and, you know, something like that. This allows you to have the full control over what you need. So this has been Drawing Kit 1313 with how to set up your own bucket server. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you really enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like a comment, or if you really want to, go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up to date to all my videos. Again, all links that you need are in the description, including the little code that you had to type into the run.bat, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, this is DrawingKit1313. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you uh, set up your server, and you know, all that fun stuff. So until next time, I'll see ya.